welcome you to another edition of Life and Learner Success brought to you by Top Virtual Staffing Solutions. That's what it is. Let's all continue to grow, learn, and innovate. All right. So please follow us on our, all of our social media account. We would appreciate that. And if you have any questions or anything you want us to discuss, feel free to reach out to us at 866-887-7821 or email us at manuel at topvirtualstaffing.com. So this is our third session. And as always, we're going to have a review. And we, for today's session, we are going to discuss how creative are you, diversity, emotional, and social intelligence, and the difference between victims and creators. We'll discuss that. And then at the same time, responsibility and choices. As always, we're going to focus on critical thinking, scientific thinking, growth mindset, and willpower. And feel free to go ahead and watch the session that we did in terms of what is critical thinking for strength through stress, just in case if you're interested more about that. All right, let's skip the implicit consent and the disclaimer and the ground rules as well. This is pretty much the same as always. Why free? Because we want you to focus on donating to worthwhile causes. And for today's session, it's going to be recovery-oriented systems of care, though they are not a nonprofit organization, but it's a group of individuals helping each other out for people who are in recovery in relation to substance abuse, drug abuse, uh, or any type of abuse from that perspective. So feel free to check out what is available in your local areas. All right, so why free? If you want to contribute to all of the nonprofit organizations that we support, feel free to support this initiative using the GoFundMe page that we have here. And at the same time, we have these free virtual town hall sessions, wherein we had a session with Delegate Terry Hill, who is also a medical doctor, uh, regarding COVID-19 policies, business, and health and wellness. All right. So, do you have any questions, Mik, or if, you, if there's anything that you want to be addressed regarding life and learner success? No. All right. Okay. So let's go ahead and review. We just uh, we discuss in terms of how analytical are you, and then why we learn for both success and failures, and how do you know yourself? So, any questions from these items? No. Not any questions. Done. We're clear. Okay. So lifelong learner, and we are reviewing this from the previous session, and hopefully you get to share your responses to at least one of these items here. So we're regarding this lifelong learning uh, slide here. Is there anything that you want to give a specific example in relation to the previous session? How I can continue to to know myself mm -hmm. is <coughs> to figure out what I did to finish, complete a task or assignment. Okay. So now I know what to do and I can use that. Looking for the word here. I can use that way of pleading something in a different challenge. Excuse me. So you can use what you have learned for future challenges you said, right? Yes. That's awesome. That is really, really a great example. Did they say really? Yeah, really great example. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good stuff. And then for regarding the creative side, so can you go ahead and identify a mistake or an error? And how are you creative to solve that specific error? We... I... When I was... When I think we were... Taking out the 
No. That's sorry. We were or I was. When we were what? I'm sorry. Hang on. I'm trying to put it into words. Okay. Take your time. So it was quite a, I think almost a month ago. Okay. I was in a session with my programming teacher and I had my water next to me and it was filled with ice. So when we were studying, me and my dad, the water slipped out and drained and the water went, ran over to my computer, melted over to my computer. <clears throat> so what I can do to fix my, that mistake, to be creative to solve it, is to either put a mat or next time I can, oh, sorry. I can put a mat under a cup or a container and then I can also mind where I'm putting my cup. That's good. So, I'm not sure if you remember that moment. But of no. course I do. <laughs> I got concerned because the, the water was seeping through under the computer. So the good yeah, thing the computer was a little bit good. above. And yes, that's a great example right there of Okay, so we all learn from that because now we now you know that cups will perspire the <laughs> ice out or the cold out, so it will create all that mist and it will kind of create all of that water out. Okay, so good. Thank you for that example. And yeah, let's not do that again. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then for the analytical side, analyze a mistake and what can you do to improve that mistake? So you mentioned earlier in terms of, okay, you were able to complete a task, you tried to review what made you complete it so that you can use that for future challenges. Is there anything that you can work on as we celebrate learning from mistakes? Well, this is something I'm kind of still working on, and I'm not sure if it's a total mistake. Okay. So this is a question mark. Okay, that's fine. When, when, you know, when you're telling me that I have to switch my my gear to one on the bike when I were going uphill. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to analyze if I need more momentum or I need it to be an easier pedal. And I really can't figure that out yet. And for me on my bike, my thumb is uh, quite small. And I think that's a bike usually for adults, I'm not sure. But when I am moving the switch, it's not like your bike, Dad. It doesn't move switch. You don't move the switch and then it comes back to its original place. It stays where it is and where it's showing, so it's above. So it's kind of hard for me to put my thumb above my my handle instead of below, because that's where my thumb usually is. It's kind of hard to do that really quick when I'm on, say I'm on three or four and I have to on accelerate to one so well uh, that is part of analysis okay how can i make use of the gears and because it's a little bit of a challenge to press the button while i'm biking and so on and so forth so you're thinking about all of these things and yes it's not necessarily a mistake but you're just trying to be as efficient or as effective as possible yes. with the bike that you have because you have gears so make use of the gears to your advantage so again all I'm going to say is if you are in the lowest level that will be so much easier to pedal regardless 
Yes. Okay. Now I understand about the challenges between the thumb and the placement and so on and so forth. So that's something that we have to analyze in order to make it work for you. And sure, if for physics, because if you have the momentum, if you're in lower gear and you're faster, it's going to be easier. Yeah, that's something that what physics can go ahead and study. They have calculations for this. Yeah. Are we going to use calculations for it? I don't know. How can we monitor velocity and momentum <laughs> and the path of least resistance and the least applied force? <laughs> We're going to do that. So, in essence, we can analyze that, but uh, that's a little bit too much for us to go ahead and make sense of things. But that's where experience will go ahead and come in, and then we'll just continue to find ways on what would be the best way for you to to move uphill in, in the best way possible. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, that's good. Another great example. All right, practical. Why should we learn from mistakes? So if we did something wrong, we can fix it and we know not to do that mistake anymore. And maybe you can grow from that that solution. If there's Hopefully, no, like no, uh, the background over here, it's like wires. That's what I'm talking about. Your, it's one straight line and then there's something coming out and then another thing coming out. The background of the slide top left oh the slide yeah gotcha gotcha <laughs> the top left yes then yeah. you have these solutions in one shape or form yes yes and then yes. those things that are coming out are shortcuts or something yes like and i'm glad that you brought that up this is exactly why i'm using <laughs> this specific slide because these are like uh computer computer chips. chips and that's computer. what it is uh, we it's analyzing on how to try to arrive at a specific solution so and you mentioned earlier regarding programming that's what it's about as well yes. so yes <laughs> i thought you're talking about my background but you're talking about the background of the slide yes another great uh, observation and response wonderful all right let's move on to critical thinking here so is there anything from the previous lesson that you can go ahead and apply that uh, use any of these in terms of elements of reasoning regarding purposes, questions, point of view, or anything from intellectual standards? Just one thing here. From the with, previous session. with perseverance and mm -hmm. evaluate and act. When, I think two nights ago, or well, last night, Mm -hmm. Yeah, last night we were fixing the computer, remember? Yes. We were trying to figure out a way of how to get the, the big thing, the connector. The HDD. Yeah, the HDD. We were trying to think of a way to get it out because the screw wasn't budging. Mm -hmm. Then it was connected to something that we first have to remove i mean we first have to remove the screw to remove it from the connector so it was kind of a step-by-step -step thing yep. so we we had we had perseverance into having the screw come out which was your job and you did of course you did use a bit of force and then it was kind of keeping it stable. And my, and the perseverance there is that, or we also learned, we learned how to take it off properly, the HDD and the screw. And we know the parts of the compute, of the, the HD, no, the, the computer of the computer to plug in. We know where to plug it in now. Yes. And then, like mm, I was saying, ahead. the perseverance is that we didn't give up even though it was, I think, 11 o'clock, 11.30. Mm -hmm. 
So, yeah. Yes. And then we yeah. got a pretty good result out of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Because we were able to upgrade it to an SSD with a higher memory. Well, almost the same memory, but it's definitely faster because it's an SSD. Uh, but we'll go back to that with the perseverance is that if we, in terms of critical thinking, we are thinking of different ways on how this was placed in and why is the screw not, it, it was just circling around. But when we, like what you said, when I applied just a little bit of force, it got an angle and then it created some traction for us to take it out. Okay. And that's what it is. We could have easily just given up and oh, whatever. But no, we continue to find solutions there. And that's a we. Yes, that's, that's a we. For both of us. <laughs> no doubt, yes. All right, uh, just going back, if you could return to our previous lesson, is there anything that you could relate to any of these items here? Oh, was that? <clears throat> I think, I'm not sure if it totally fits. Hmm. So, what problem can you identify and develop a hypothesis to test? And despite, come on, it's also a what did you do in order to finish your task? So, what I did is or sorry I should be explaining what the situation was <clears throat> so I, it's, it's like when when we were doing the bike downstairs mm -hmm. we were trying to move it outside and this is for both days we were trying to figure out if we could take it into half remember yes and this is a pretty minor problem so we were trying to figure out how to take it in half because there is a lever button, I'm not sure, mm -hmm. that we thought we could take it out by, pull. I was pulling the lever up, and then you were pulling the seat out, mm -hmm. but that didn't work, and the hypothesis there was, you thought of that, and then we did what you, what you, what you, what, what you thought of a solution. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a solution, but it was a good idea. Okay. So, with the, what did we do to, in order to finish our task? It was, yeah, it was quite heavy, so. We just forced it. <laughs> yeah. Because of the recommended bike, we were trying to split it in half, and we were trying to pull that. We get hit. Yeah, yeah, it's not a lever, it's, um. Something that you pull that locks in. Yeah. But if we pull it well enough and if we spread it apart well enough that it will separate. But yes. apparently it doesn't. So I. Uh, yeah. So we so, just had to force all of that then, heaviness. Go ahead. And then later that night or the next night, we were thinking of a way to bring it. And I was thinking of putting it in at the sharp side first. Mm -hmm. So that's my hypothesis. Mm -hmm. But like separating it, it's not, it wasn't going to work. And I didn't really agree with it too much. It was only a suggestion because the recumbent bike, it's rolling. It has this rolling thing. So we rolled it out from our from our backyard 
opened the door, and then he rolled it by the side of our house. That's a challenge, and that's something we explained in STS, Strength Through Stress. Mm -hmm. It was a challenge getting it up to to the car because we had this rocky, bumpy area, and there's a lot of roots coming up from it. Remember mm -hmm. that? Yes, of course. <laughs> so that was a challenge, and it was pretty wobbly. So I was there to stabilize it and all that. And then comes the sharp edge, and then the wheels. What you were thinking was that you could roll it on top of the, on top of, in, the, not on top, in the, the trunk. Man, I'm forgetting these words. Mm -hmm. We were thinking of rolling it into the trunk. And even though I didn't say anything, I was just kind of worried that the sharp part, it's flat on the end, but it does, it's not like a square. Mm -hmm. It had this sharp part, the, the edge. I mean, sorry. It wasn't exactly, it wasn't a closed shape. So, it had this edge, and I was kind of worried that it might hit the car, mm -hmm. the metal car. But, yeah, you were, you were strong enough, and you pulled through. Yeah, but and then was the like... next problem was that it wasn't going to fit through the car. Mm -hmm. So you decided you were going to have the trunk open again. Yeah. And as I explained, because I do not have your help to disclose it properly. Yes. I can't really fit I, it out. I need to have the heavy stuff up front first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's what it is. When we are faced with these challenges and these are practical things that we have given, uh, that all okay, right, there's a situation, there's a problem, and we continuously as the hypothesis on how we're going to go about it. And then if we go back to how to, in terms of analytical skills, we try to analyze what's the best way to go about it. And yeah, and see if we can, and we continuously test hypotheses to make things easier if it can be done. Yeah. All right, really superb examples, good. All right. So let's go ahead and identify how creative are you? Oh, uh, all the items have showed up here. So let's begin with the first question. Again, this is one not at all true for me. And if you could go ahead and chat, identify the item and then your rating for it. Okay. So one being not at all true for you and very true for you. That's five. And here there's a middle ground, number three, that it's rather neutral. But ideally, you choose items between one and five. So four will be true for you, and three is somewhere in the middle. Okay? And again, there are no right or wrong answers. Don't answer this to impress me or impress the viewers. Just answer it as truthful as you could be of what you believe things are. So let's begin with the first one. I question the validity and rationality of rules and regulations. So, I don't really, I don't quite understand it. Can you okay. Uh, Alright, let's yeah. break it. Okay, let's break it down. <clears throat> there are rules and regulations in school, in driving a car, and doing whatever it is that we need to do, correct? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Uh, and then with any rule that you have or whatever rules that we have in our house or what have you, do you question the if it's valid and if it's reasonable? Do you question those things or you just accept them as they are all the time? So very true of you that you question them or you don't. Hopefully that made more sense. Okay. All right. Let's move on to number two. 
you view yourself as being unique, that you have full of ideas, and you are innovative. And that's one of our yeah. values here, being, to innovate. So do you view yourself as being unique, full of ideas, and that you innovate? So one being not at all true, or number five, very true, or somewhere in between. Okay, number three, whenever you work with other people, do you generate a lot of ideas? For the next one, brand new experiences, do they energize you? Five very true, four true, three neutral, two, two, not at all true. Not, not true, or not at all true for me. Or number four. All right, let's move on to the last item on this slide. I say something risky from time to time. Not at all true, somewhere in between. Five, if you think that is very true of who you are. Let's move on to number six. I wonder in doing or seeing things differently. I don't really understand what you mean by that. Okay, yeah, I, it's not a very good phrase here. Do you wonder a lot? Do you wonder, do you think about things to, to view things, to view perspectives or do it for, differently on how you're going to do them on, or how you see them. Oh. Do you think about things, about your realities, about problems, about situations, on how you can view them or work on them differently? Is that very true of you or somewhere in the middle or not at all true? <clears throat> so feel free to chat your response here. All right, let's move on. Number seven, routine or a fixed schedule drains your energy. If you're doing the same thing over and over and over, does it drain your energy or no? So one, not at all true. Five, very true of you. All right, let's move on to the next item. Do you see connections among ideas wherein other people do not see such connections? So five very true, one number not at all true. Number nine, I am fine or I'm comfortable to have mistakes especially when you test out ideas. Very comfortable for that to happen. For such mistakes to happen, especially when you're testing out ideas. All right, last item here. I am completely fine to lead an idea even if others disagree with me. So you have an idea, but you're still comfortable to lead it even if other people around you are disagreeing. What's your answer to the last item? One, not at all true. Five, very true of you. Okay. All right. So go ahead and add all of those numbers, those values.
Is it only 25? You may need to add again. <coughs> the values of all of those scores. All right, great. So 34, if you scored 38 to 50, you are strong. 24 to 37, it's average. 10 to 23 needs improvement. In terms of your creative thinking skills, okay? <clears throat> so is there, any other, is there an item here that you want to clarify or go ahead and explain a little bit more while you answer the such? Not really, actually. Not really? Okay. But you can imagine in terms of being creative, because fine, rules and regulations are there. You remember when we were walking the dog and then some other guy was saying no rules are laws are wrong? He's challenging rules and regulations in terms of picking up poop, right? Oh. You remember that? I think so. Okay, so, but, but then we discuss it a little bit further. Well, why is it that we need to pick up the poop of the dog? And we've identified that if there's too much poop around and if it's being run off to the ocean or to the bay, then it kills all of the other plant life sources out down there because it covers up the top portion, correct? Yes. No. Right. I think you said that there are plants on top that block sunlight and then yes. the plants die and then if there are no more plants, the fish die and then the sharks die and then we die if we don't have much f food. That's really down the road, yes. But the immediate impact is that the plants on top feed off of that poop right there. And they grow exponentially if there's too much of that. And if those plants on top of the water, body of water, then and then there's not enough sunlight down, down below, which impacts all of the other life forms down there. Yes. <clears throat> so we go back to that. Oh, it's good you're challenging the rules on why we should pick up or should not pick up. But if the science says the reason why we need to do that is because of what we just talked about. So in essence, it's a valid rule, it's a valid law. It's a reasonable law, that's why we need to pick up the poop. Does yep. that make sense? Yep. Yes. So it's good to question things. That's fine. And it seems like he was speaking up and it seems risky. He, he, he's like arguing with somebody else about it. So that's what it is, okay? All right, so you scored the uh, number, so you scored okay. high five on number four, brand new experiences energize you. So it's always good to have new experiences, right? Yeah. Okay. So that energizes you, that makes you become creative. So any new experiences energize you. You answered three, for example, for routines. So having a fixed schedule is fine, but at the same time, if you, if you like new experiences, that, that's good, correct? Yeah. All right, good. So if we go back to that, if you answered five, four mostly or five mostly, then you have creative thinking skills. You have strong creative thinking skills. So we'll continue to develop there. You're already average. We'll continue to find ways to develop on such things. Cool? Yep. All right. So let's go ahead and move on. Working with others. So if you enlarge this picture, different people, walks of life, and that's what it is. You need to be able to embrace diversity. It cannot be exactly the same as you. 
when we work with other people, they have general, they have creative ideas on how to find solutions to whatever the problems are. And guess what? Regarding top virtual staffing solutions in the next few weeks, as we have a national discussion and movement regarding inequality because of skin color or anything to that effect, that hopefully we are more welcoming of different things and use that to actually to actually use that to our advantage to become better human beings or as a society, we will have those virtual town hall sessions. And it's not only going to be coming from my perspective, but we are going to have special guests to discuss certain aspects. So that's what it is in terms of working with other people, embracing diversity. Working with others. Emotional intelligence or emotional coaching. So here with different people, what it is in terms of emotional intelligence is that you are able to decipher what people are feeling. So can you see here who's happy, who's just stoic, who's a little bit having a question in their mind, at least from this picture, from these people. You see the differences of their facial expressions. Uh, well, kind of, yeah. Okay. So you can identify who's happy, who's sad, and so on and so forth, correct? Yep. All right. So that's what it is in terms of working with others. We need to be able to decipher such. But more about EQ. One is self-awareness, and I know you have discussed this in one shape or form in so many levels already, correct? Yep. All right, so that's what it is. We accept who we, who we are. We know who we are in terms of our body, in terms of our mind, in terms of our emotions, that we are observant of who we are. The next part of EQ is self-management. How do we manage making good choices versus bad choices? That's where EQ comes in. Hopefully we make better choices or smarter choices on how we are. And how we manage ourselves in terms of what we do, how we react, how we behave. Make sense? Yes. All right. Let's move on to the next EQ here. Another aspect of emotional quotient of social awareness, that we are aware of the people around us, the, what they're feeling, what they may want, and so on and so forth. So that's the EQ part of social awareness. We, we're not only aware of who we are, but we're also aware of other people. The other component of EQ is social skills. How are we able to work with other people? How are we impacting them? How are they impacting us? So that's EQ right there in relation to social skills. What are the skills that we need to communicate, to listen, to understand and comprehend? whatever the situation is. So that's the social skills, another component of EQ, which is emotional quotient. More about working with others. Social intelligence. So with what Dr. King has identified, as you can see here, that we need to be respectful. We need to be direct and eloquent, that we are clear with what we are saying. We follow certain principles that we do not cross. We are strong, we are courageous. So these are social intelligence that hopefully we get to display. So that when we work with others, we work with others well. And with our previous session, remember what you said with team? Yes. 
What does TEAM stand for again in terms of that acronym? Together, everyone achieves more. Wonderful. And that's what it is. That's why we're discussing it here regarding life and learner success because we cannot do and achieve everything just on our own. We need to be able to find ways to work with other people. Okay? All right. So the next one is social intelligence. Nonverbal signals about how others are feeling. So you can see from this picture, it seems like they are making each other happy. Hopefully. <laughs> Correct? Yeah. All right. Next. Oh, can you go oh. back? Okay. Yes, I apologize. It's too fast. So nonverbal skills, we need to pay attention to identify how they are. And they've identified that 60%, 80% of communication is actually nonverbal. What? I can go ahead and say, I'm happy. This is my face. Or I go ahead and say, I am sad. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's how powerful nonverbal cues are. And with social intelligence is that we are able to decipher what other people are feeling based on such cues. Let's move on to, so, to further or diving deeper regarding social intelligence. That we listen fully and tune in carefully to others. I know having phones and TV on and so on and so forth is easily available. But if you really want to listen fully, we need to put those things aside and really understand what they're trying to go ahead and say. And whatever notions or thought processes we may have, we need to park that. We need to park those. We need to fully listen what they're telling you so that you will make sense of what they are sharing. And that is being socially intelligent. The next aspect of social intelligence is to make an effort to empathize. Do you know what empathy is? Yes. Okay. What is empathy? Care to describe it for me? Oh, uh, it's kind of sharing. helping other people, it's sharing your kindness. Okay. Well, yeah, you being kind to other people, that's what it is in terms of social intelligence. And if you would see some of the words here, for example, we welcome them, we receive them, we invite them, and identify exactly what they are going through and view it from their perspective as much as we can. Okay. The next aspect of social intelligence is social decorum. Why do I have a picture of people wearing masks? Oh, are you asking me? Yes. Sorry. Because we are in a time of a pandemic. Okay. And we need to wear masks outside, especially when we're going to indoor places because... Yes. We have to wear masks because so we don't... If we're talking, we don't spread our germs. Exactly. And inside, it's also very important because the air circulation moves all the particles. It kind of stays around yeah. when you're inside, yes. yes. When you're outside, it kind of spreads around a little bit more, but still, it, that's the social that. decorum right there. We need to identify what is appropriate socially. So seven months ago, this is not a socially acceptable thing, but we're all wearing masks, especially if you're going to a bank, for example. Yeah. <laughs> but right now, you, everybody needs to wear a mask. Okay. Yeah. Let's move on to victim versus creator. 
Any questions previously in terms of social intelligence and emotional quotient? Nope. Okay. Let's move on to victim versus creator. This is where we go ahead and blame versus seeking solutions. And as you mentioned earlier, that's why, or yeah, that's, that's why this is my slide because in terms of microchips is that this continues to think of solutions. It, it, it doesn't understand blaming. It just constantly finds solutions with whatever it is that the program is trying to do. Does that make sense? Yep. All right. More about victim versus creator is that complaining versus taking action. And actually, if you would see here, one is an active verb, taking action, versus just complain, complain, complain. And the reason why I chose this picture is that this young lady seems to be interested in learning, reading books. That is very important. It is important for us to continue to be educated, for us to go ahead and learn facts based on science, and that's what it is versus just complaining whatever is going on. The next aspect of victim versus creator is excuse versus effort. So if you're trying to win a race, are you going to focus more on excuses? Or you know what, I need to run as fast as I can. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. That's what it is. You put in the effort to be a creator and not focusing on excuses. The next one for victim versus creator is you try something new. So my image is as simple as it can get. Old ways, or you know what? Let's identify new ways to approach things. Okay, so if you're a creator, just going back earlier, being creative, you always try something new in order to yield the results that you want to achieve. And that's what it is in terms of victim versus creator. One more. Oh, in terms of victim versus creator, which one will receive the ideal results? For the most part, are you a victim or your creator? Which one would it be? I think that would be... The one... That, the one that will yield the idea of results. The one who keeps complaining or the ones who keeps finding solutions? The one who keeps who keeps finding solutions. Okay. The one who's doing the same thing over and over or will try to find other ways to make things to be effective and efficient? Second choice. Second choice. So we want to be a creator and that's what it is. Getting a thumbs up, right? Yep. All right. Before we review, do you have any questions for me? I know. Nope. nope. All right. So let's review. Continue to be creative. Need to channel creativity. Emotional quotient, social intelligence, because we need to continue to work with other people. Creator versus victim mentality and approaches in life. That's what it is. So let's move on to lifelong learning which you will review and provide your own examples next week. This is what it is. If I take full responsibility for all of my actions, I will achieve many things. So if I take full responsibility for all of my actions, I will achieve many things. If I take full responsibility for all of my thoughts, if I am responsible for my thoughts, then hopefully I will be more successful. I will have a better plan if I take full responsibility for all of my thoughts. If I take full responsibility for all of my feelings, then I will manage 
my emotions a little bit better because I am responsible for my feelings. If I am responsible for my education, then I will achieve the degree or the program that I am trying to complete because I am responsible for my degree or for my training. Then I will earn that degree or program or pass that exam. I will take full responsibility for my health because my health is my wealth. So I have to eat properly. I have to sleep well. I have to exercise and move. And with that, I will feel better because I am responsible for my health. Any questions regarding full responsibility? No, actually. Okay, so hopefully you will give... Keep reminding me on. The what? That's something you keep reminding me on. Exactly, that's what it is. All right, let's move on to the CAP session here. Creative, C, for CAP. How did you become creative in working with others? How did you become creative in finding a solution? So some of the examples that you provided earlier, that's, those are great. But for example, for me, I, when I was in college, I had this groupmate of mine that keeps contradicting me for whatever reason. And I do not understand why this person keeps contradicting me. And I ask, what's your reason behind it? And this person will just say, just because. And I'm super confused why this person just continuously just contradict me. Contradict me. So for me, I just need to get the group project good the group projects completed that they need to be done. I need to focus on that. So I was thinking, if this person is saying the opposite of what I want, and not because I just want it, because I have reasons why I want whatever that needs to be done. I thought of the opposite of what I want, and that's what I bring up. And true to form, this person will contradict it. And then it will end up with what I initially want. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Weird. And then I go ahead and say, that's a great idea. And I don't have to tell this person, well, technically speaking, that was my initial idea, but it's okay as long as we get things done. That's what it is. I became creative in terms of finding a solution and working with this person that just wants to contradict me for the sake of it. Next is analytical. What works best for you to be creative? For me, what works best for me is sometimes I just need to listen to very smart people <laughs> who have solutions, who are successful in life. That's what works best for me to become creative. What made me successful in terms of a choice that I made I is just really committing to it. Committing to whatever it is that I need to do and get things done. I need to commit to it and that's what it is for me to become successful. To become a creator. The practical side of things is that, how can creativity help me with my challenges? Sometimes if I view it from a different perspective, it helps me to find a different solution. And ah, e. What? I'm still stuck on analytical. Oh, okay, that's fine. Because I know you chatted that your yeah. computer is about to run out of juice, so. That's why I'm rushing a little bit here. Ready? All right, so for the practical aspect, this is the P on the cap part. How can creativity help you with your challenges? As I mentioned, if you view it from a different perspective, it's always helpful. And then how can you combine creativity and in being a creator? Think about this. The root word for both is create. And nothing creates out of nothing. We need to put in the effort. And that's the most important key. We put in the time, we put in the effort in order to be successful. 
And these are practical things that we need to apply and do in order to achieve the goals that we have set forth for ourselves. Make sense? No. All right. Okay, so again, we want to invite you for our Strength Through Stress session, Sundays, 5 p.m. Life and Learner Success, our session today, tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Sundays. And then Workout Buddy, please check us out, out on Top Virtual Staffing Solutions, Fridays, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, and Bidyoko Scrabble, Friday, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. All right, thank you as always for joining us. All right, and then uh, references, these are our resources. Thank you to everyone. We will hopefully see you next week. Take care. Questions, Mika? Can you go back to practical just real quick? I think I have enough juice. Okay, all right, practical it is. Thanks for asking. <laughs> I didn't want you to go and run out, and at the end of the day, this, this slide is not going anywhere, but might as well complete what you want to complete. Please share our videos and subscribe to our channel. If not, my dad will not give me dessert.